Welcome to the second part of document number three of the Introduction to Math Operations, in which we were talking about complex numbers. In part number two, we're going to talk about the operation of complex numbers in SMAS Studio, and for that purpose, we're going to use this document. <clears throat> so, in, we can write a complex number in SMAS Studio using Cartesian components like this. And then we can apply, for example, the real part uh, function, which just simply separates the real part of this number. And the imaginary part separates the imaginary part of that number. The magnitude can be calculated using the absolute value function. And all you have to do is type ABS a, of Z, and it will give you that particular value or use the function arg, lowercase arg of z, which will give you the angle. We can check that by doing the arc tangent of y over x. As you can see, you get the same result as here. And let's see, the complex conjugate I'm going to call it z of z, because that bar is not easy to write in SMAS Studio, in which we take the real part and the negative of the imaginary part. Uh, it's very simple to write, so you don't have to have a special function. Uh, if you multiply z to z, z times z of z, I mean the, the number by its complex conjugate, you get the number 41, which happens to be the magnitude of z squared. There's a function called x, y, 2, pole. These functions, by the way, are available in the fx and the complex numbers x, y, to pole, that means convert Cartesian to polar, or you have pole to x, y, and then you have the real imaginary and argument functions available. <clears throat> uh, here, uh, in x, y, to pole, you have to give a complex number, and I will give you the real, I mean, the, the, the radial co coordinate and the angular coordinate. If you use the inverse polar to Cartesian, you have to provide those two values. And it uh, uses some sort of a complex calculation that always includes a complex, com uh, a uh, imaginary component, sorry. But it always gives you numbers like 10 to the minus 15, which are basically negligible. These are basically zeros. And so the numbers of interest are this one and this one, uh, negative x, uh, actually. And those are basically the same as, actually there's a, there's a number, it's a 9 in there. This is that negative 4 that we had over here, and the 5 with some numerical error. Uh, let's see, define two complex numbers, Z1 and Z2, and apply operations to it. We have some, as I say, you just have to do Z1 plus Z2 and let s Studio take care of the sum and z1 minus z2, a product and division that give you right away the uh, results that you expect in the um, Cartesian representation. Operations like power, and then we have the square root and the cubic root. These are applying, for example, this one and this one. However, there is an interesting development in terms of finding the n root of a number. If I write the n uh, root of number z1 equal to z, then I can raise both sides of the equation to n and end up with zn equal to z1. And z is the unknown and n is an integer, so we're looking for the n root. Now the number z1 here can be written in its polar form like this. And so the equation that we want to solve, this equation right here, is equivalent to z, to say zn equal r1 e to the i theta 1. If you recall, e to the i theta 1 by Euler's formula is a combination of sine and cosine function. And sine and cosine functions are periodic functions of, of uh, period 2 pi. In other words, cosine of theta 1 is equivalent to cosine of theta plus 2 k pi, and sine of theta 1 is equal to sine of theta 1 plus 2 k pi, where k could be 0 plus minus 1 plus minus 2. In other words, every, every 2 pi, the angle, uh, or every increase of 2 pi, sorry, the sine and cosine will repeat. And so I'm going to change my expression into the i theta, of not using the simple version of the Euler formula, 
but using this more complex form. And we're going to keep only the positive, and you're going to see why. The thing is that they start repeating after a while. And so I take my Z1 that I already originally written like this, and I'm going to write it like this with this um, periodic property. And so the equation of interest to me, this one right here, will now be written as this. Now, when I take the uh, root, n root, basically I'm dividing the exponent by n, and so in the left-hand side, I end up with z, which is what I find, I, I want to find, sorry. And then you have the magnitude r1 raised to the 1 over n. That's a simple um, real number operation. And then you have e to the i theta plus 2 chi pi divided by n. Or instead of writing r to the 1 over n, put the n root of r1 e to the i theta 1 plus 2k pi divided by n, where the values of k will be equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. Well, we notice that we only need to calculate k equal from 0 to n minus 1 to find the n roots, because after that they start repeating. And so we're going to limit our calculations to k 0 to n minus 1. This is the formula to use then. For example, if you want to calculate the square root of z1 for for, three, uh, for 3i, the magnitude is equal to 5, the argument is 0.6435, and n is equal to 2. And so I need to do it only for k equal 0, 1, and 2. Which is my n plus 1. And so I take the formula, this formula right here, and apply it to those values for k equals 0, I obtain this complex number. If I, that I'm calling the ZR1, that means for root. And my ZR1 square is equal to 4 plus 3i, which is the number that I'm working with. If I do it for k equal 1, I obtain this value, which happens to be a, the negative of this one. And that value also has the square equal to 4 plus 3, 1. After that, my roots start repeating, okay? And so I'm, I'm going to have to stop at this point. So you have two roots, and these are given by these two values. This one starts repeating, as you can see right there. And so now we go for reporting our roots, and then we go for another example, the cubic root of this quantity. Calculate the and the argument, calculate, I'm sorry, calculate the magnitude and the argument, and apply the formula. For n equals 3, I need to apply for 0, 1, and 2. And I'm getting this root, and this root, and this root. And when you raise them to the cube, you get this result. Now, these are a, uh, an approach that I apply for a complex number. A real number is just a complex number with zero imaginary part. And so you could apply the same approach to calculate, for example, the cubic roots of 27, we know that 3 is one of the cubic roots of 27, but because of the uh, use of complex numbers, we, we can find a two more um, cubic roots. And so we calculate those values and apply n equals 3, and we start looking at the roots 3 cubic 27, this one cubic 27 with their imaginary part and times to the minus 14, which is almost 0, and then the third root is this one. And this is the the appropriate result. And so these are the three cubic roots of 27. Now, um, I'm going to stop at this point, And in the next video, we're going to continue with programming the n complex roots and an exercise on complex numbers. So for that, we'll finish the video uh, for part two.